Hey everyone, in today's project tutorial, we're gonna be looking at blueprints and how you can utilize it to supercharge your system. All right, in order to get started, we need to log in first. And as soon as we log in, we get to the home screen here. Now, if you are not super familiar with this, we need to go over to the settings tab over here. Just click on this one, it's called setup. If you click it, you're gonna get a whole bunch of more options. We've gone through a few of these in some other tutorials, but in this one specifically, I wanna talk about task automation. So task automation, there's a lot going on here. We have blueprints, workflow rules, email templates, email alerts, and webhooks. So this is a bunch of different options that we can select. Blueprints allows us to um, take a super manual task and turn it into more of an automation. So let's say you, know, you have your statuses open, in progress, closed. You know, between that, you can set, okay, in order to go from open to in progress, we need to have a pre-job form filled up. In, to go, in order to go from in progress to close, we need to have our post job form completed or evidence. Maybe we need images uploaded, something like that. You can make sure that these items are automatically pulled in to this blueprint. So to make sure that your team is automatically doing a lot of this work, that's the best way I can explain it. Now, the best way is to really show you, and we'll be diving into that in a minute, but we also have workflow rules over here. So this allows you to basically set up different automation pieces um, within the actual system. So you can set up a rule name, description, layouts, and do it on whatever specific layout, and you can ex execute it on anything specific as well. So within that, you do have the ability to set, up, set it up on basic triggers. So when a status changes from open to in progress, then you can trigger something to run. So it's, it's pretty expansive on what it can do. We're gonna dive into that in another tutorial though. You can create email templates in here and fire them off. This is super helpful. Email alerts internally to your team is super helpful as well. And then you can set up webhooks. The webhooks are really just any time that something happens, you can shoot it off to a webhook and allows you to integrate with other tools that may, um, may accept that information that you're sending it. All right, going back to the blueprint here, we do have this blueprint that I created just before I started this tutorial. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna show you what happens. So this is, it's a drag and drop system where you really just you know drag and drop your your statuses into here so you can have different criteria we're not going to do that so we're going to go from open to in progress to we're going to drag this and we're going to connect that so once it's open its next stage is in progress now it can go once it's in progress it can go to in review it can go to be tested it can go to on hold and it can go to cancel. Let's say these are the four different statuses that it could be. So we could have one, two, three, and four. And then it's either closed or it goes to delayed. Um, I'm actually just gonna remove this one because I don't wanna overcomplicate it. So I am going to, I don't think I can remove that one super easily. Yes, so I removed it. Now it's going to go to close. So in review to closed, to be tested is likely going to go back to in progress. So we can have that set up there. On hold is going to go back to not to that one. Can be a little finicky, but we're going to set it to go back and canceled is going to be in end state. And we'd also want it to go from um, on hold to canceled as well, let's say. So there's a few different things on the go here, right? So to be tested is going back to in progress. Realistically, we could actually put this one better off over there. And to be tested could also go to in review. So we've just set up a super basic blueprint. You can make it look nicer. I won't spend a ton of time doing that, but I wanna show you what it looks like. So you can have a start, it goes to open. From open, it goes to in progress. From in progress, it could go to to be tested, in review, on hold, and canceled. And then it can also go to closed. So I'm just gonna publish this one so you can see what it looks like. So we also need to make sure that we add in the transition name. So this is in progress. You can change this to be whatever you want. So open it in progress. Common transition means that basically from any of these, you can access this. So we don't wanna set that. So we just wanna click save. Now, one of the really cool things with this is that you can set up these different automation pieces before, during, and after. So before this gets started, you can actually click add criteria. So you need to make sure that there's, this will only run on specific projects, on specific tasks, 
you don't really need that. You're not going to use this one too much. There's not a ton that you can do with it. The during is where things get a lot more um, effective. So you can make sure that you're adding in fields, messages, um, selecting the fields, let's say attachments, we're going to add that in there. So you can configure fields and messages that will be displayed while performing a transition in the task details page. So during, you can set up attachments to upload. So now, now this is going to trigger us to ensure that we have attachments that are going to be uploaded to the system. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't want that in there. And then we also have after. So after is where we want email alerts, field updates, custom functions, and webhooks to run. So this is where you can set up a lot of custom functions and automation pieces within this. So you can update fields, you can add in custom functions. If you really wanted to, you can set up email alerts to the rest of your team saying, you know, we now have a new project in progress, or you can set up webhooks, like I said before, to integrate with any other systems that, may, that you may want to integrate this into. So if we do that for each of these, I'm just gonna go through and do that now. Um, I'm going to say to be, this is in progress. Looks like that one didn't save. So in progress. progress to, let's say, just for the sake of it. We have a transition name of to be tested. You can change this to anything you want. Like for example, we could change in progress to be project starting, something like that. That might make more sense. So you can change it to be whatever you want. So to be tested to in review, um, send for review. Closed, going to review, this one is going on hold, we have canceling project, then we also have Canceling. So those are all of our transition names that have been created. I'm just going to save this. Oh, it looks like there is one more that I forgot. So this one is going from on hold to in progress. Um, so back in progress. All right, so now that we finished up the blueprint, we are gonna go ahead and click publish. We're gonna go back to one of our projects here. So we're in the Dove residence here, and we're gonna just create a new task, so test, and I need an owner to be associated with it so I can actually use the layout, the blueprint I mean. So I'm gonna set up a user here because I need a user in order to actually use the blueprint. So I'm gonna click save, and it is now added. So now you can see that the project starting is the next transition, so I can click that, okay. Now we're gonna to go to going to review, to be tested, going on hold. So I can click, uh, let's go to going to review. It's gonna allow me to go, and then I can go to closed. And that's it. So this task is now completed. And so we went through the entire blueprint there, and it made it so much simpler because I didn't have to move it from, let's say if it was in a Kanban style card over here, I didn't have to remember it because I didn't forget about it. It's just something that needs to happen. It's part of the process. It makes things really simple for the rest of the team. This is a super effective tool because it allows them to not think about what they have to do. Any sort of Kanban style where they have to drag and drop over and over and over if they forget. And this actually happens within my team as well. We use Zoho projects for our work and sometimes people forget things. So the more that we can remove that, that required work on their end, the easier we make it for them the more likely they are to actually complete it and follow along in the process. So that is it for this tutorial. Please make sure you are liking and commenting down below this video. If you have any comments on this tutorial, how we can make it better, or if you're confused about anything that we maybe talked over or we didn't dive into enough information, please let me know. And if you got any value out of this, please make sure that you are subscribing to our channel. Getting more people like yourself to subscribe to our channel allows you to get content quicker and it allows us to reach a larger audience of people who are looking for information like this. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.